All right, so we just finished up with partner activity two, and then I have more practice. Now, I really thought about this, because of course, yeah, you can find all sorts of division problems and just hand them over and say, give me the estimate. Then some kids need some help, and most kids are going to need some, a little bit of help, guidance at first when estimating with division. It's a little different than with multiplication. So... Here I say I have seven, and then I give them some options, and they're going to circle which one would make the most sense. I'm the one listing out those multiples of seven with the zero attached because I have my three-digit number. So the 301 is closest to my 280. And then I'm going to do 280 divided by seven, blah, 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 blah. Okay? And then on the back of it, I don't have any guidance. So no, a kid does not should not be required to do every single one of these. But if they want more of a challenge, they could try some without the scaffold on there and see what they could do. I also included a word problem. All right, so that's that. Thursday, ski day, Friday. Come back and we're at it again. But this time, I'm not only gonna estimate, we're gonna find the actual quotient, see if it matches up, see if it's reasonable. All right, Google slide deck of the activities. I was very excited by this. It's not that exciting, but makes it a little more exciting with this Guinness Book of World Record of toy cars, model cars. So <clears throat> this just gives the picture. I would not show the video right away. I would say, yeah, this looks really cool. Like, I want to know how many this guy has, but no, I'm not going to show you until we do our problems first. And then if you tried hard, I'll show you. So there is a link to that video there. And the, co the problems that we're going to do deal with toy cars. So if I go here, I say, show that picture, discuss with kids if they have any at home. Maybe you bring in yours if you have any. I know I have a big bag just from Ari and Britta, so you can use mine if you want. I actually have them in my classroom right now because I will get them out um, if kids earned time to play. Some of them still like to play with those cars. Um, and then, yeah, once we're done doing two problems about toy cars, then I'll show you the Guinness Book World Record video. So I have put together a... Uh, sheet for the kids. So problem A is let's say out of all these years you're now 10 and you've like loved having toy cars let's say you're a kid who enjoys them and you keep wanting to get them and you're actually forming your own collection and so far you have 144 cars in your collection. Now you're going to start organizing them so they look like what is this gonna look like on the floor like how many of these well there's 144 of them but if you put them in columns of six how far is it gonna go so we're gonna come up with our estimate first as to how far it would go and then we're gonna find the actual quotient and when we find the actual quotient we're going to make use of a grid to help us an area model from fourth grade there's a lot of them like that and it's a part of the fifth grade standard. Okay, so I put down here what the work would look like. So I have in the estimate, I'm writing it out. I'm saying, okay, I am dividing into groups of six. That's a pretty easy number. I'm not going to change that number. Okay, it's a single digit already. I'm keeping it. So then I move over to this one and I'm looking for multiples of six. So I'm like, okay, six. 12, um, 18, that's too much. So now I'm at 120. So this is the work they did from the day before. And we say, okay, we're going to have about a 20 columns of six. Then we go ahead and find the actual quotient. And this is where we're using that grid. So, um, I'll go ahead and do this step-by-step step with you so you can see how I would work it. 
As you notice, I am putting zeros in there. I'm not just carrying down the four because the standard is about place value and understanding what is happening in the division. So, yeah. All right. So if I go back to this, I'm going to take a little snippet so I can show you how I would work it. Give myself a little more room here. All right. So let me take a snapshot of this. Boom, bada bing. There. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and because the standard says we need to say link division with multiplication. So I'm going to go, okay, well, when I'm doing uh, the actual problem, I need to think about that 144 divided by into groups of six equals how many of those? Like how many? So I'm going to say how many groups of six will give me a total of 144 toy cars. How many lines, columns of six can I make to when I've used all my 144 cars? So this is my fact family. I can solve a division problem by thinking about it as multiplication. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and look down here and give myself a visual because visuals when we're trying to understand mathematics and we look at a visual of it, it's actually going to make our brain even stronger than just by seeing it as a number. So that's why I'm showing you these visuals. So let's make a column of six. So I have one toy car, two, three, four, five, six toy cars right there. That's one column right there of six cars. Now, do, have we used all 144 cars yet? Heck no. There's a lot to go. So we know the answer is not just one, and that's not even reasonable because our estimate was 20. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my division, and I'm going to go 144 divided into groups of six, right? And now I have a three-digit number right here. This is where we want to be nice and neat, and I'm having a hard time being neat because I'm using this on the computer, and it's really hard to write. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put one side of my area model here. This is the area inside of a six by one column, okay? All right, so I start here. I start in this place. And this place is the hundreds. So am I going to have 100 groups of six cars? Uh, no, that'd be way too much. That'd be 600. And I don't have 600 cars. I only have 144. That's way too much. So I'm going to cross that out. I am not going to have a digit there, a number there. It's too much. So now, and we didn't in our estimate either. So now I'm going here, and that's the tens place. So now how many tens? Am I gonna have some tens in this? Because if I go here and I go 10 columns of six cars, that'll be 60. Yeah, that's 60 cars. I have 144 cars, I could keep going. Can I do another 10? That would be 120, yeah. Could I do another 10? No, that would be 180. So I can do two 10s or 20 columns. So this is 20, okay? 20 columns. And if I have 20 columns of six cars, is that a total of 144? No, that's a total of 120. So I'm gonna write that right under the 144 because that's what I'm trying to get to. 120, how many cars will I have left to put out there? Because this right here is 120 cars. And it's nice because a kid could visually see that entire thing. Then I subtract and I'm left with how many cars? I'm left with 24 cars. So now how many more columns of six am I going to need to do? So if I do one more, that's six, 12, 18, 24, okay, four, right? I need four more columns, so I'm gonna put that up here. I need 
four more columns of six. That'll give me 24 total cars, and I'll have no cars left over. Awesomeness, because right here gives me 24 more cars. And then I will say, all right, well, let's check it, because we said we can use multiplication to check this. So 144 divided by 6 is supposedly 24, and that seems to be reasonable because our estimate um, was 20. And now if I check down here with multiplication, probably wouldn't put that check there yet because I haven't checked it with multiplication. Does 24 groups of 6 or 24 times 6 give me 144? Then go ahead and do it and get super excited that it works. Okay, so that's using straight up place value. No, we are not going straight to um, going like this and going, just looking at the one. Does six go into one? No, okay. Does six go into 14? Yeah, twice. Oh, that's 12. Okay, subtract, that's two. Bring down the four. And does six go into 24? Yeah, four times. It is similar. Um, of course it is. I mean, that's what we're doing here. This is the standard for sixth grade. This is the standard for fifth. All right. So, if I go back to the notes, where am I? I, I need to stop with all my tabs, don't I? I think it's right here. All right. So then I have you doing another one. There is another one on there. And it just gives a two-digit quotient, or a two-digit divisor instead. So it's the same idea. You might be like, oh my gosh, that's going to be way harder. Well, you still have your picture there so you can draw out a line of 12 and you can more easily see that. Um, I can go ahead and try that one with you quick because there's three more minutes left in the video. So if I scroll down, 252 divided by 12. So I'll just start it with you. So... If I'm doing 252 divided by 12, I'm going to say, all right, now I'm taking my cars and going into 12 for a column instead of just 6. So what do you think is going to happen? I have 12. But it's not the same amount of cars now. Now it's 252. It's a different situation because I have now way more cars. So now I do the same thing, the same idea. The hundreds. Am I going to have 100 columns of 12? No, because that would be 1,200, and that's way too many. So no. All right. Am I going to have groups of, am I going to have tens? So 10 times 12. So I go here, and I go 10 times 12. That's what makes it nice right there. That's 120. Could I have another 120? That's what's nice for a kid. They could be like, oh, well, 120 and 120. That's 240. Oh, yeah. So I can't go any more than that. Okay? So you get the idea. I'm going to have 20. I'm going to put, okay, that's two tens. That's 240. How many do I have left over? Get the idea, guys? Okay. Good. All right. Then the last activity is to try two more together. Maybe do a wiggle break, brain stretch, whatever. Come back. And then, now, instead of having grid paper, let's just do a problem using an open array. So I gave two problems for you. And here is how I would work it without the grids. So it's the same idea that we were writing. But now, as you notice, I'm just drawing in that. So I will try to do it in 30 seconds here. Um, oh my gosh, go, go, go. 140 divided by 4. So I go 4 times 100. No, that's too much. 4 times 10. Yeah, how many 10s? Oh, with 3 10s. Okay, so that's 30. So I'm going to go that that's 120. And, and I'm working the algorithm on the side at the same time. Okay? And then how much do I have left? We notice in the algorithm we have how many left. Okay, is it just going to be one more column of 4? Two more columns of 4? Three more columns for? How many more columns of four? 
Okay? All right.